looks like someone's not ready to call it a season yet, huh, Jay? Talk about tonight a little bit. Um, both teams, you know, came ready to play. Uh, you know, all week in practice, we've been focusing on getting our plays down pat and then getting a lot of shots up. And tonight, uh, we ran the offense pretty good and a lot of shots went in for us. So, that's about it. Mostly your shots. Yeah, you know, uh, from the start, I just wanted to uh, stay confident, you know, just think about every shot going in. Scotty, you saw that they were pretty much doubling Mike the whole game, so were you kind of, once you saw that Jay was getting on a hot streak there, were you kind of actively looking for him out there? Um, yeah, they were kind of crowded in the middle, so when you drive into the paint, you had to look out instead of in. So, I mean, since they were covering Mike and Alejo in the paint, and they were contesting the shots, you had to look out for the three-point guys so they could be open, and that's what he was looking for. First half was a little sluggish. Was it due to the six days off? I mean, this time of year, you're used to playing a little bit more than, than right now. I mean, you could say it was that. Um, I mean, we, we, we've been playing, and we played in practice the other day, I mean, to try to get the, the system of playing in the game. But, um, I mean, I guess we came out a little sluggish, like you said. And um, I don't know, I guess we could just blame it on ourselves. Mm -hmm. No one else to blame it on. What do you think about playing at this point? What is it about, you know, what do you like about Raleigh like about being in this tournament and have a chance to kind of keep playing? Um, you know, you just, just like since we, we all love basketball, obviously that's why we came in. So whenever you get a chance to play in the postseason tournament, you know, you want to take that and take on each game as, and play it. Right now we're playing as if every game is our last. So it, it feels good to keep playing and keep our seniors playing since this is the last year. Um, how does this benefit you guys even for next year, just continuing your season? Um, it helps us know that how we could, how to win the championship. Uh, since we lost the championship this year in the MAC, uh, playing in this is just helping us play in the postseason against, against a bunch of teams that don't want to lose. Mm -hmm. So it's just more competitive play, and then we just keep learning and growing as a group. And this is really just, I mean, we, we want to win this tournament, of course, and um, it's building off next year. Mm -hmm. Scott, in the second half, were you able to kind of increase the tempo of the game more to your way you like to play? Um, yeah, we were getting deflections and defense. We was getting stops, steals, um, and um, we got to start pushing the ball more. Uh, when we do that, then we get to push the ball more. But if the team keeps scoring consistently and we keep switching baskets, then we can't push it. Jamel, you had once a time in the second half, you had eight points in a row, two, three points, and you had one beautiful layup down the middle of the key. Uh, did you feel very confident at that point? Yes. Uh, Scott always jokes about me saying, uh, whenever I don't make shots, I never drive. So, you know, tonight I, I just felt comfortable. You know, uh, like I said earlier, I thought that everything was going to go in. So I know they were keen on me, so I tried to get in the lane a little bit, and hopefully one of the big men would get open. Good. Career high for you, JJ, tonight. Any thoughts on that? What was it? 23, I think. 23. Yeah, 23. Um, you know, it, it feels good, but it's not really about the points and just about the final score and us coming out on top. Okay. Okay. Do you know anything about, is it East Tennessee? East Tennessee. East Tennessee State. Um, I, I heard that they were a, a good team, you know, uh, and we just got to go down there fighting again like we did tonight. Okay. Hey, all right. Tim, uh, a little sluggish in the first half. Is that a little bit from the, the six days or the layoff a little bit? I think it's a little combination of everything, playing at a time when the, you know, the regular season is beyond us. And uh, you know, it's kind of tournament's a little different. You don't know who your opponent is right away, mm -hmm. and you try to get refocused. And guys have been missing class and trying to catch up. We went back to school on Monday after spring break, and I just kind of saw a little bit lethargic practices for two days as well. I was glad some of the guys at the bench helped us in the first half. Mm -hmm. And then JJ had a great second half, so obviously making shots. And some of the other guys came in the second half and did a better job. How much does this tournament help? I mean, just it to keep playing. It helps the development of, yeah. of all our players. And I think it's great for the seniors to keep going and have the chance to keep playing and winning games. And to play teams that we haven't played against that maybe in their career and to have a chance to see how we measure up against other teams. It looked like they were doubling Mike. You know, they were going to make someone else beat them, and that turned out to be JJ. Yeah. Um, well, they were doubling him on, their, on every catch, and they did a nice job of that and bodying him off and out of the lane. Mm -hmm. 
And I thought Mike actually did a pretty good job of accepting that and moving the ball back out and not trying to force the issue. So it was Kate. Yeah. And Scott, again, had nine assists. So I think when he passes the ball, we're very good. Coach, did you make any adjustments in the second half? It seemed like the tempo of the game picked up. And we, we kind of changed our half-court defense a little bit and went about, went about attacking them a little bit differently than we did in the first half. We came with two or three different zone defenses and matchups. We kind of try to mix them up a little bit and go back and forth and try to keep them from getting back in a rhythm again offensively. They thrived in the first half when you guys were pressing them and then you guys kind of resulted in a half-court defense. Did you expect that to happen in the first half? We wanted to find out. You know, you don't have a lot of time to prepare for teams, so you look at a couple of films. And really, in that league, it didn't seem like there was many teams that pressed. So I think what it did do, though, it took a couple of their shooters out of the game when we pressed. They had to go with a better team to handle the ball, but I don't think they shot the ball as well with the group that they had to put in. So I think in, in the long run it did help us at times because number five didn't play as usual number of minutes and really didn't get going. Number two hit a couple of shots early, but then really didn't hurt us the rest of the way. Yeah, you have to approach it differently. You, you can't expect to get the same amount out of them right away, and you have to use different techniques to get them to want to play and want to win. And I think, you know, that we have a group that gets themselves motivated and took on this challenge when it would have been easy not to. So I'm very proud of them. I was a lot of people, I think, you know, look at these tournaments and say, like, you know, why do they exist? Or, you know, not as big as March Madness. Right. What's, what's your opinion, I guess? And I probably thought value? that before we played in it. <laughs> and then playing in that first game and going out to Valpo and playing in, in an arena like that with – uh, against a coach with a great reputation, a school with a great reputation, having us a chance to play against them, I thought it was great. Yeah. And then when you win the game, you're like, wow, this was really good. We got a chance to play again after getting beat and have a chance to heal some wounds a little bit. And then I've also looked at it like some of the guys who I didn't play as much out of back next year. I've been really putting them in and putting them to the test, especially with Kyle Smythe out. It's given us a chance to develop some other players within our within our team. I think it's been great for that as well. So now I'm all for it. Is there anything that you can that you know about East Tennessee State at all? <laughs> I know it's a long trip. There's no direct flights, and it's going to be a long bus ride, but I'm looking forward to it. Game's going to be on Saturday at TBA. Saturday. Okay. Saturday. Questions for the Touch. Yes. With, obviously, with Kyle out injured and then the, the defense shutting down the layhole with Mike, what do you think it meant to you guys emotionally to be able to remind you of the guys to come out with a big win like this, especially with such a huge point differential? I think it was great for our bench to give us as much as they did, and, and I think they feel more and more a part of the team as the season went on. That's kind of the reason I think we were able to turn our season around was the produ productivity out of the bench. And, like, J.J. right now is going to be happy. Randy was happy. Sean Armand, who doesn't normally start, got a chance to start the last two games. So I think it's just going to build their comfort factor in games and in big games as well, playing in a tournament style, knowing if you don't play well, your season's over. It's a lot different than playing in a regular season game. So it helps us, I think, for the future as well. All right, last question. Hey, Coach, uh, Sean got hot in the uh, first half and uh, Jamil in the second half. How do you kind of look for a player that you think has got the shooting touch? Yeah, just really you run a couple of sets for them and you see if they're coming out and taking good shots and making it. And then a lot with Sean right now it depends on his defense as well. Like I took him out more because of his defensive breakdowns than not shooting the ball. I think he could have had a really big night offensively, but he was giving away points as easily as he was getting them. So, and that's, he's a freshman and he's really working at it. And the good thing about him now is when I take him out to talk to him about it, he's very receptive to what he did wrong. And he's like, yeah, I should have done this. So he has an idea now of what he should be doing. The next step is to actually do it. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thanks.